Going into the final round of Shamkir, Magnus Carlsen was just half a point ahead of Vishwanathan Anand. Anand had the black pieces against Caruana, not an easy game to play for a win. Nevertheless, Carlsen knew that the only way that he could guarantee first was to go for a win. He was playing Rauf Mamedov from Azerbaijan. Now, on paper, the weakest player in the tournament, but actually he's proved to be a very solid competitor over this event. And here today, he played a very solid opening, the Slav, and uh, this trendy variation with a6. And Carlsen played his speciality, bishop e2. Now, the idea of this is that after e6, White will nab the two bishops, and okay, you can count on some advantage there. So Mamedov played the approved move, h6, giving the bishop a bolt hole. And now Carlson played bishop d3. It looks very odd to play bishop e2 and then bishop d3. Well, one thing is that after h6, the bishop can't retreat to g6, so White should exchange. That's what happened. Now, does it make such a huge difference to have the pawn on h6 and not on h7 in this position? Well, sometimes. You know, sometimes if white manages to break later on and get some kind of kingside attack, then potentially that pawn on h6 could be a target. But it's pretty subtle stuff. Anyway, they have a very generic Slav position on the board. So unpretentious development from Carlsen. And actually, this position was reached earlier on in the tournament in, in the game between Giri and Mam Mamadyarov. And there, Giri played a3, but Carlsen stuck to his own idea and played rook fd1. Now, he had exactly this position against Nakamura last year. And Nakamura took on c3 and then played the developing move knight d7. Well, Carson won quite a long game, pretty convincingly. But you might be asking, why doesn't Black play knight d7 here? You know, why not wait, possibly trade on c3 or not? Well, the problem is there is a tactic. Knight takes d5. If bishop takes bishop, then you throw in knight takes knight check, and only then recapture on d2, so white wins a pawn. So that's the trick in this position, and that's why Nakamura exchanged on c3 and then played knight d7, and why in this game Mamedov played bishop a5. Now the bishop is defended, so this trick is avoided. And Carlsen here thought for 17 minutes over a4. It's an unusual looking move, but we'll see the idea on the next turn, b4. Now, black could drop back the bishop, but obviously white has gained a lot of space there on the, on the queen side. So, Mamedov wanted to be shown and took the pawn. And now again, we see this trick, knight takes. Now, black has a lot of moves here. Um, nothing is entirely satisfactory. Well, once again, if bishop takes, then white throws in this check and then recaptures. And white has a positional advantage here because he has more center pawns and there's a potential target here. Mamedov simply took with the pawn. So material is still even, but Carlsen has this bishop and has the majority of pawns in the center. And now we can see one of the points of advancing this A pawn is that it manages to basically control two pawns. But Mamedov's position is solid. Yes, from a structural point of view, white is better. White has these nice center pawns. But black is solid and actually has very good coordination with his pieces. Carlson withdrew the bishop, just gets it out of the way for the time being. And over these next few moves, both sides shuffle their pieces round into better positions. So black is, is well coordinated here. And one of white's problems is that 
you know, in an ideal world, he would love to advance his centre pawns, but actually, black would then have great pressure down these central files, and that knight would sit very nicely on b5, blocking the b file and hitting white's pawn centre. So, for the time being, Carlson just has to manoeuvre his pieces. Bishop b4, okay, now things are starting to happen. So, really, Mamedov doesn't want to have to live with this pin, so he exchanged this off. And this looks a bit clearer, having got rid of that knight, for Carlsen at any rate. But, you know, Black is sitting on these central squares and has excellent coordination. So still not easy for White to advance. And here's an interesting moment. I would have imagined that Carlsen would exchange, but clearly he felt that it's not easy to make progress here. For example, that knight could simply bounce around to b5, blocking any potential pressure on the b file, and also looking at this pawn on d4. So still very, very difficult for White to advance there. So Carlson played knight c5. Black exchanged. Now, I was looking at this position and I just thought rook takes knight was the simplest way to go here. Um, and, and maybe slowly try to organise some kind of breakthrough in the middle, perhaps with d5 or, or you know, maybe even a kingside advance. But Carlson played pawn takes, that really surprised me. He still has a structural advantage. He has this four against three kingside pawn majority. You can see that black's queenside pawn majority is completely crippled. So Carlson's still somewhat better here. But it's not easy to make progress. My maid of is just waiting. Now here's a, a typically provocative move from Carlson. You can see that the queen is controlling d7, so white has the idea maybe to go in with rook d7. But of course that queen can be pushed away by either f5 or h5, but in both cases that slightly draws black out. And after f5 that was indeed played, the queen just came back to b4, and then rook e4. Okay, this this looks like a like a decent way for black to play. And I don't think it's really possible to to check and and play here because I think rook takes e3 would result in a draw by perpetual check. So Carlson came back check. King came here, for it seems like a very safe square. I think so far, Mamedov is defending well. Rook d6. Okay, well this looks very pleasant for white. But if black just plays rook e5 here, then I think he's still solid enough. So looking at this pawn, queen c2 is possible, defending that and maybe looking at this. White still has pressure here, but... You know, I think black can defend. But instead, Mamedov, under relentless pressure, blundered with queen e5. It looks like a very natural move, but after queen f7, I'm afraid that was it. The threat, queen g6, followed by rook d8. And there's only one defence to that, and that's to bring the queen back, but of course that is a free pawn. Now it's only one pawn, but really with a 4-2 kingside pawn majority, that is now a disaster for black. White would win very easily. All the rook and pawn endgames are now winning for white, for example. So there we go. Carlsen did it. He won the tournament, in fact, and only drew, so... It, even if he hadn't, if, even if he'd only drawn this game, it would have been enough. So anyway, final scores. Carlsen, 7 out of 9. Anand, 6. Caruana and So, 5 points. 
It was such an impressive performance by Carlson. Again, <laughs> he really had only one hiccup, and that was in round one against Anand. But, well, he defended brilliantly, actually, and having survived that game, his play in the rest of the tournament was really impressive. Fantastic technique. Well, that we know uh, very well from Magnus's play. But also, this time... I sensed his opening preparation was actually, uh, I think, well, more impressive than it has been before. So, well, as Carlson said afterwards, I'm still learning all the time. The difficult part is using what you've learned and, and, and using them in games. But he said he, he feels like he's learning, improving, and that's motivation enough to keep going. Well, yeah, it's, it's great stuff. Anand... Six out of nine, really impressive performance from him. And he's now number two on the live rating list. What a comeback over the past year or so he's had. He seems to have recaptured uh, you know, his old form. And, and it, it's that practical feel that he has, that, that match fitness that he seems to have found again. So he's doing well too. Thanks very much for watching uh, this, this video. If you've enjoyed these reports over uh, the past week or so, um, then please do subscribe to my Powerplay Chess YouTube channel. It's free to subscribe. And as well as covering the top tournaments, I look at all kinds of uh, aspects of chess. I look at uh, strategy, uh, opening play, uh, classic games from Karpov, Kasparov and, and others and loads more besides. So please do subscribe if you've enjoyed these videos. Thanks for watching. See you soon.